Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017, China announced that their scientists have built the world's first quantum computing machine. They are exploring three technical routes, systems based on single photons, ultra cold atoms, and superconducting circuits. And I'm confused as to why they don't even bring up D-Wave like it wasn't a thing, but I'm sure that's probably just technical semantics easily explained away and not indicative that they're working across dimensions to develop new technology that would then be implemented in our quote unquote reality. It is a significant milestone. We're starting to emerge out of the research era to commercialization. China is very much leading the frontier with the satellite in terms of quantum teleportation. Okay, slow down there, Turbo. Let's go back and talk about quantum teleportation, you said? Yeah, what's this satellite? What's this about? I'm gonna have to look into that. In real people terms, how would this impact your life and my daily life? Well, there's a saying, um, finding a needle in the haystack. Uh, that is a very difficult thing to do, but with quantum computing, now you can actually isolate down to a specific sand particle out of all the sand in the world. Like sands, the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Now, that's the kind of metaphor that we're talking about in terms of the type of computation and the complexity of computation it can do. Watch, now he's going to bring up cancer. I bet you anything. So imagine what it means in terms of solving difficult challenges like cancer. What are we going to do with cancer again? formula uh, and the permutations for pharmaceuticals that can address some of the most severe diseases, as an example. Because, right, dude, you don't want to cure cancer, then you wouldn't get any money. As well as powering uh, the future generation artificial intelligence that in, in, in the future can be fully autonomous. Oh, we're making an AI to take us over. And can handle systems of systems, especially in the context of smart cities. Smart cities where the AI knows all. One of the key advantages of quantum computing is this ability to handle something called the integer factorization using the Shor's algorithm. It's able to solve very difficult large prime factors, which means that you can actually break any of the existing crypto algorithms that exist today. More importantly, when you develop cybersecurity solutions on a quantum computer, it cannot be hacked. By the sheer principles of uh, entanglement, just the fact that you have a third party that's trying to observe it, it will actually change the result. Okay, but it does not protect us against an AI takeover. Sorry to be paranoid. Just throwing that out there. And this is exactly what is being tested using that satellite uh, for the next two years. Oh yeah, let's go take a look at that. Uh, what was it, quantum teleportation satellite? So they're talking about building this infrastructure that's necessary for basically a quantum network. And apparently they already have some quantum networks set up in huge metropolitan areas. But the real future of the technology lies in quantum networks, the infrastructure required to connect many senders and receivers. These are springing up within and between major metropolitan areas. South Korea's government is funding a 250 kilometer link to join existing metro Quantum networks in Britain, a network of similar length, will be deployed between the cities of Bristol and Cambridge via London. Australia is building a closed government network in the capital, Canberra. Canberra, the capital. Now, thanks to the Mandela effect. <laughs> and get this, no quantum network is more ambitious than the one completed in China at the end of last year. Funded by the central government, it links Beijing and Shanghai, which already have a metro network over 70 square kilometers, made up of 50 nodes, switchboards, connecting sender, senders and receivers, which has a 46 node network. And its customers include, oh, I don't know, China Industry, Commercial Bank, and the news agency. So now in the international race of quantum supremacy that's going on between the nations right now, there are two ways to get around the biggest problem. And that is that you need to be close to your targets. They need to build this huge infrastructure or they can get around it in one of two ways because they can't break the entanglement so they can do land or air. The land-based solution is to develop quantum analogs of the repeater and this will require quantum memory that can store incoming information and a means of sending them on that does not compromise that does not compromise the quantum security. And that last part requires another bit of quantum trickery, which is teleportation. And that's a way of projecting the quantum state of one particle, not the particle itself, onto another distant one. 
And last year, two research groups showed the benefits of it, and they actually were able to do it using the same wavelengths as those used in existing telecoms networks to ensure that the new technique would be co kosher, it would work with the existing infrastructure. So basically, they're all ready to go with this huge billion dollar infrastructure that's already built. I, I'm wondering if these places are reading that ours is already built over here. But if you listen to these plans, they are basically about building a huge AI and giving it free reign over smart cities and things like that. And it's going to be, you know, quantum entangled, safe traveling to all the encryption. And that's going to be controlled by an AI. Are we creating a huge global network? Last August, China created Mesius like Prometheus, I don't know, a quantum key distribution enabled satellite backed by tech companies, including blah, blah, blah. The goal at this stage is to link Beijing to Shanghai network and another one and another one, Singapore, Canada, Japan, Italy, and America. Oh boy, you guys look, it says, once the challenges of getting quantum signals into space through the turbulence in the air and the clouds and so on are overcome, a global network could easily follow. It's our dream, you guys. We're gonna cure cancer with our global network that looks like it's well underway. So why do we need this global network? Um, do we have software to run these quantum machines we're networking uh, to banks and everything in our infrastructure? Well, according to Tim Polk of the White House Office Staff of Science and Technology Policy in Washington, it doesn't help to have a quantum computer if no one knows how to program it. And although academic efforts to build quantum computer hardware have been going great for two decades, comparatively little has been done to develop the software needed to run these huge machines. Well, but we probably got started already, right? It says two parallel elf efforts are underway. One is to create software programming languages. Oh, Okay, and the other is to create graphical interfaces, and algorithms, like a Windows for quantum, with step-by-step -step instru. Okay, so no, we have not even started on software, but we've almost got the infrastructure for this networked global. Okay, so the father of the quantum computer, David Deutsch says that he contends what he calls his constructor theory provides a perspective that will lead to the rewriting of physics altogether. As with classical computer science, quantum computation, and even genetics is just based on the role of information. But rather than letting physical laws define what is and is not possible as science does now, constructor theory asserts that those laws actually arise from what is and is not possible. From observed possibilities, a mathematical object called a constructor can be fashioned. By what? An AI? What? Aliens? What is this? Operating on and with these constructors gives rise to Dr. Deutsch reckons is a theory far more fundamental than quantum mechanics and has the potential to append the very foundations of science. So that's what we're really trying to do, you guys. We want to change the laws of nature and be gods i guess with an infrastructure i really don't think these people know what they're doing here but luckily there is hope in humanity i think everybody should check out this website it is called nanocheese.com so this is the mccavis project using quantum computing they want to emulate the notion of a multiverse um, for an AI so that they can build a quantum protection system that uses encapsulation with quantum entanglement. And there are a number of scenarios that we would be protected from. We, it's just a safety net, a firewall. It'll protect us from some rogue runaway AI. They're gonna combine quantum computing with distributed computing, which is the cloud. This guy has vision. This is a startup company and they actually, I believe are are starting to work with D-Wave now. Um, I really hope that people get on board with this, some of it. So it says, we want everyone to remember while watching this, we did not want this technology to be invented, but it has been. He's talking about this AI, this infrastructure. He sees what's coming. He says, there's no stopping it now, but now we that were against it can move on to figuring out how to safeguard us and protect us from it. We must, I agree. We must do something. And this is a good idea. He proposes that we build an endless simulation, a never-ending story. 
he actually took inspiration from the movie. He wants to create a multiverse of a simulated environment that the AIs can get developed in. They can be put into a fake infrastructure. They don't have to know that it's fake. It can be endlessly wonderful for them and they're happy, but they're not implemented directly into our infrastructure so that they are guarded against. And he explains it very well on um, some of his videos. He has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna put all his links into the description, but this is a good idea. And he calls it a quantum firewall. And it's basically a virtual reality with many multiverses to keep an AI busy and a place we can train them and contain them. <laughs> I just made that up. That is awesome though. I think I'm going to tell him about that. <laughs> so it, this is a good idea. Um, his website's nanocheese.com and um, I'm going to do another Probably I'm going to do an interview with him coming up here pretty soon. Anyway, much love to everybody. Let me know in the comments what you want me to do videos about. And the more you know.